So anytime you see a, a whole number like that on the end, I would suggest maybe just sticking it over one just to, to give yourself an idea of it, it doesn't really have a denominator right now, okay? So our LCD, obviously the other two denominators have x minus 3, so that's it, okay? That is it. They're not on the same side, so we can't put them together. Now we could kind of fix that problem, but anyways. Uh, multiply everything by x minus 3. Okay, so for that first one, the x minus 3 is canceled, so you're left with x. The second one, the x minus 3 is canceled, you're left with 3. The last one, nothing cancels, so we have 9 times, make sure it's in parentheses, x minus 3. So we need to distribute the 9. 9x minus 27. We have variables on both sides, so we need to fix that. x minus 9x is negative 8x. 3 minus 27 is negative 24. That's on the same side, so we just combine those. And then we divide by negative 8, and we get that x is equal to 3. Now, looking at the original problem, what is going to happen when we plug in 3 for x? It's going to give us an error. Why is there going to be an error? You can't mean the denominator. Right. When we plug it into the denominator, 3 minus 3 is 0. We cannot divide by 0. So this is an example of an extraneous solution. Even though we get the answer right here, this is an extraneous solution. We don't have another one, so this problem has no solution. Okay, you can write it out, no solution. You can put a zero with a line through it. That represents no solution. Yes, ma'am. Yes, there are other ways to solve this. Right, and nine does not equal one. So that's another time that you would say that there's no solution. Okay, good point. So what you do, you, you moved the, okay. Yes, there is another way to do this, okay. You could take this second rational expression, subtract it to the other side. They have the same denominator, so you can combine them. So you got x minus three over x minus three, which is one. And Ashley, let me, kind of, no, I'm just kind of talking through this. Um, x over x minus 3, she subtracted this, and you can put those together, and 1 does not equal 9. That's not true, so that's another way to come to the conclusion that it is no solution. Okay. Um, yes, that way really it is easier. Um, I was just trying to keep things uniform, not to confuse you. If you see that, that's great. Moral of the story, though, is this has no solution. Okay, there is no way for that left side to equal the right side. All right, now this one does have a solution. So let's look at this one. Three over x plus three is equal to five over two times, or excuse me, yes, five over two x plus six plus one over x minus two. Now, up to this point, we haven't had a situation where we've had to factor anything. Okay? We have not had to factor anything. Uh, but finally, we do have a little bit of factoring we can do. Because if we don't do that, we have three different binomials that are part of our LCD. That's going to make our problem really, really big. But if we notice that that second denominator there has a GCF of 2, and when we take that out... Okay, well that's nice. We have a shared factor there between the first denominator and the second denominator. Um, and we don't have quite so much that we've got to worry about. So I'm going to go ahead and get that 2 and the x plus 3. And then the last denominator is unique, the x minus 2. Now that 2 does not count for the GCF of 2. Two different 2s. Okay? <clears throat> so when we go through... And multiply everything by 2 and x plus 3 and x minus 2.
The first one, the x plus 3's cancel, so we have 2 times 3 times x minus 2. The 2's cancel in the second one, and the x plus 3, so we have 5 times x minus 2. Don't forget your plus sign. The last one, only the x minus 2 cancels, so we have 2 times x plus 3. Okay, now I'm sure by now some of you are starting to catch on to, you know, what's happening, how you can kind of not write quite so much, but I'm going to keep doing it though because it prevents um, careless mistakes. Okay, then I'm just going to begin solving. Multiplying the 2 times 3 to get 6, distributing the 5, distributing the 2, distribute the 6 on the left side, combine like terms on the right side. Slow down for a second. We have variables on both sides of the equation. So we will fix that problem really quick by subtracting 6x. Now technically you could subtract the 7x, but then you're going to end up with a negative variable. I try to avoid that at all cost. And then add the 4. So we get negative 8. Now you can certainly type this back into your calculator to check, uh, but we do not at first glance have the issue that we had on the last problem because none of our denominators, if we plug in negative 8, will give us a, a 0. But it does not hurt to check to make sure that negative 8 is indeed the correct number. Okay, just again make sure that with these denominators you put parentheses around the denominator. Or your calculator will not compute it as you intend for it to. Both sides give us negative 0.6, so negative 8 is our final answer. Okay. So let's practice with some similar to this. 7, 9, and 10 there on your worksheet. 